And guys, finally, the lesson that I've been promising everyone on the Patreon about generative music. Okay, so firstly, before we take a deep dive, let's define what generative music is and is not, why we use it, where it comes from, and then of course, sort of lay out a framework for how and why we're going to use generative principles to enhance whatever current level of skill you have as a composer all right no matter how good you are as a composer um, or how bad i'm very confident that you are going to find something here that is going to surprise you you'll be able to use generative principles which are pretty easy um, and you'll be able to find melodies that you weren't going to come up with or that were either more complicated than you could have imagined or just different to what you typically compose when you sit down and you compose as a typical sort of MIDI keyboardist, someone who uses the piano roll or uses a door. Okay, so yeah, gener generative music for me is all about um, setting up enough randomization and surprise in a composition that it keeps me interested, stops me from getting bored during the music making process. And of course, the result sounds very good as well for the listener. Okay, so um, before we take the deep dive, just a quick definition. Generative music is a term that was coined by Brian Eno. He's an amazing artist. If you don't know Brian Eno's work, check out his work. It's very ambient, um, but it's a sort of perfect sonic encapsulation of what generative music is all about. His definition is that it's made by a system and it's ever-changing and never the same. Okay, that's a very broad definition. So I've kind of added in a little bit to that. Generative music is at least partially generated by a system according to a set of laws, probabilities, or principles. Okay, and I think even though that is also still pretty broad and vague, um, it's a bit more specific. Okay, generated by a system. Now, what do we mean when we say that? Well, it means that the computer could generate a system, a random voltage generator could generate a melody, um, all kinds of different tools, which I'll, I'm going to be demonstrating today, could generate melodies in very unusual ways, okay? Or, as I'll show you in our first example, we could make a standard melody and then we can insert randomization in certain ways to that melody that we created by hand. So it's not just composing melodies from scratch that the computer is, so to speak, making for you. In fact, there's very little of that in generative music. What it generally is is shaping and enhancing and sort of refining um, existing ideas or inserting randomization or degrees of randomization into those ideas. Okay? So, on with the definition. Um, historically, generative music um, has quite a purist philosophy, i.e., the initial composers would make these pieces of music that were just generated according to these sets of random pros uh, probabilities. There was a specific piece of software that used to do this called Cone. I didn't really go back and research that software um, in the interest of this video, um, but it would be a cool research project if any of you would like to. Um, but I know that the initial Eno work was done using this Cone software, but obviously now um, there are multiple tools, including hardware modules, VCV rack, which I'll be focusing on today, and a whole bunch of other ways that we can use, that we can create generative music. Okay. Um, another thing that's sort of notable about gen generative music is that it's known to be free of typical musical structures like verses, choruses, etc. Okay, so it doesn't have definable um, structure like a pop song would. For example, I guess if you make techno, nor does techno really. Um, but in traditional generative music, there were almost no, no sort of verses, choruses, bridges, breakdowns, etc. It just kind of goes on. Okay, that's not something I would include though in the modern definition or in the current definition um, because I like to use generative principles. In other words, insert some degree of randomization, randomness or unexpectedness. And I like to do that to melodies in the context of an entire song. You know, I'm not just trying to make ambient music with generative principles. I'm trying to actually either create full songs or enhance existing full songs that already sort of exist and just add melodic content to them. Okay. Um, yeah, wonderful. Um, so just to conclude, um, for a more modern definition, um, we consider generative music as any music which contains some degree of randomization in the rhythmic, melodic, or harmonic content. Okay, I'm most happy with that definition because I think um, it encompasses everything that we can do with generative music. 
All right. Okay, so enough yabbering. Let's jump straight in to the example. Okay, I have VCV open here. If you've never seen this program before, it may look a little bit alarming. It's a completely free um, Eurorack simulator. You can download it from vcvrack.com, I think. Just search vcvrack. And you can make a user account and you can download almost infinite amounts of modules. Some of these modules are original designs. A lot of them, like this one here, are very, very faithful and accurate representations or recreations of hardware modules. This is a hardware um, emulation, or software emulation rather, of a hardware module I have called Plates, a very famous oscillator by Mutable Instruments. I love my plates. I have three of them in my hardware rack. And seeing how amazing this emulation of this oscillator is in VCV really sold me on this program and um, what you can do with it. So yeah, this is, it behaves and performs and articulates and expresses almost identically to my hardware module, which is which is really cool. So, um, I have a very elementary setup. I've got an audio interface here, a small mixer with four channels. I've got a clock over here, okay? Um, there are some extra modules that you'll have to subscribe to in order to open these patches, because I'm gonna provide all of them for you, um, and in order to build them yourself. Impromptu, um, audible instruments, bog audio, um and one or two others um Stormelder, that's a very important manufacturer i'll put these all up on the patreon in some notes and um what is the maker of this ml modules very important okay so yeah a couple of extra modules but they're all free you just go onto the site and you subscribe to the manufacturers and you'll see them okay so that's that's all the preamble everything i'm using today is free nothing is is is, is a premium module Cool, so I have this clock. I'm generating a BPM signal at 120 beats per minute. I've actually got three clocks. Um, I'm gonna take clock one, which is a really slow, so it's like a one over four signal. Times four would mean four over four, so like 16th notes. I'm gonna take a one over four. I'm just gonna take this clock into a sequencer, okay? All right, now what the sequencer does, you can see I don't actually have notes. But just allows me to um, build a series of um, pitches where this sort of middle line is the default pitch and anything above and below that are going to be melodic variations pitch variations okay now this is going to sound awful i'm just pre-warning you but let's just connect this random series of pitches that are being generated by these sliders and i'm going to connect them into um, the volt per octave of this oscillator okay volt per octave um, as I'm going to explain in a more detailed video on my YouTube I'm going to go through all of these terms in a lot of detail um, but because my patreon users are already quite advanced and I've been hinting at these concepts volt per octave is just the message that carries pitch information okay it carries pitch information to these oscillators okay and it's a very simple system where one volt equals one octave therefore two volts is two octaves and if one volt is one octave then we know that one twelfth of a volt is a semitone okay so it's a simple system of converting voltage into into musical pitch okay so let's output the output of this oscillator all right now i've taken the wrong output i'm going to connect it to the sequencer Okay, and what we hear is absolute madness, absolute chaos. Okay, so you can see these pitches. These pitches are being sort of played, so I can adjust them until they have some degree of sense to them. Okay, but you see, as you can blatantly hear, let's just stop those. Those are not very musical pitches, and it would be very hard to make a musical melody by sitting and tuning all of these pitches by ear, if not impossible, but very difficult. Okay, so, but this is very important is that this sequencer is, it's just running a fixed series of pitches and just to turn those up again. Okay, they sound awful. All right. Now, I'm going to go and I'm just going to right click on this module, which by the way is the Bog Audio ADDR sequencer. It's an awesome sequencer. I'm going to right click, I'm going to adjust the range because it's currently 10 volts or 10 octaves and I'm going to make it five volts or five octaves and if we listen to that it'll just be a slightly 
more controlled random series of pitches. In other words, it's only five octaves of range. Okay, but it's still very unmusical, so it's not not usable yet. Okay, now I'm going to move that sequence over here. You can hear how sort of chaotic and, and unmusical it is. Okay, and I don't actually know what pitches these are. I can sort of tell what's high and what's low, but I don't know. Is that C? Is it D? I have no idea. All right, I'm not actually conscious in any way of the notes that that this is okay of the note that any one of these steps represents rather all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that out and i'm going to take it into a vca a vca is just like a mixer that can, that can control the level of any voltage in this case the voltage that's coming out of here represents not level but the actual pitch of the of the notes okay so let me show you what i mean unplug this back into the pitch and we'll turn that up all right, so I've got a full five uh, volts, full five octaves of range. I'm just going to take this down a bit. Okay, and you can hear it's pulling, even though the pitches aren't very musical, still it's pulling the range of the melody down. It's pulling the range, the gap, the intervals between those pitches down. So that's really important. Okay, when the VCA is closed all the way, all I get is the root pitch of the sequencer, or the root pitch of the oscillator, which is in C, by the way. Okay. As soon as this goes up, it starts inserting other notes. Okay, so that makes total sense. But those notes are not musical. So I'm going to take them out and I'm going to take it into a quantizer. Okay, and all this is going to do is it's going to round that voltage off into musical voltage. And you can see I've got a keyboard here where this is C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, etc. Okay, so I'm going to assume some basic music theory knowledge. Let me just turn this buzzing off in this oscillator. I'm going to assume some basic music theory knowledge. Um, obviously, if you guys are on my Patreon, your music theory is excellent by this stage. If you're watching this on the YouTube or whatever, um, I'm just going to assume that you have some basic understanding of scales, modes, etc. And if you don't, there are hundreds of hours of free tuition available on the Swoon Educational um, YouTube channel, and I'm going to be uploading that to my personal channel in different forms over the next few weeks and months. Um, okay, so I'm going to set a uh, scale here which is going to be C minor and that's C I'm going to put D sharp the third I'm going to put G which is the fifth and I'm going to put A sharp which is the seventh so basically I have a C one three five seven or a C minor seven chord it's got the first third fifth and seventh intervals of the C minor scale okay it's a really nice chord minor sevens already sweet and I won't go into too much theory but I do at least like to contextualize what's happening with these modules in terms of some theoretical basis because otherwise it can just get too crazy and you can't actually write songs, okay? So I know that overall the key signature of this piece, the whole piece, is going to be C minor. And the specific scale, the whole scale, if I, if I do the whole scale, is C, D, D sharp, F, G, G sharp, and A sharp. That would be the whole scale, that's C melodic minor. But I don't want every note in the scale, so I'm taking out the second I'll take out the fourth um, and yeah that looks good I'll keep the fifth and the sixth and the seventh so I've got C D sharp G G sharp and a sharp five notes of the C minor scale okay and I'm gonna take that out and I'll put that into volt per octave and let's turn this up now okay now if you paying attention you'll see that that is a lot more musical now I can start playing with these pitches and I know that the voltage is going to be round off into an, uh, a note in the key signature one of these notes that I've selected okay now I know that doesn't sound amazing but just give me a second I'm going to bring up an old friend which is waiting here which is just a reverb absolutely essential for these kind of melodies and I'll just take the output through the reverb Okay, now how amazing is that? Just bear in mind, you, you're dealing with a, you know, it's a very basic oscillator. It's just a sawtooth. It doesn't have any envelopes on it. It doesn't have any shaping. It doesn't have any filters. Any of those normal components that you would have in a VST synth, they're not applied yet. So we really need this reverb just to, like, make things barrel because otherwise it's just a dry sawtooth wave. Okay. 
now, now that I've got the sound sounding good and a bit of reverb, I can really tune this melody, right? Okay, I like that note high, so let's make that note really high. Love that. Love that, I like that high note. Okay, now bear in mind just from the outset that these are all clocked according to the clock. So I've got this coming out of a clock with times one, which as I said is like a one over four time. I'm at 120 BPM though, so we can speed this up a lot. Beautiful, really beautiful. Now I want to come back to this idea of the VCA because the VCA, as I have labeled here, controls the range of this melody. So I already have a shape. The sequence is giving me a shape of the melody. It's outputting these random voltages, it's coming into the quantizer, and the quantizer is sort of aligning it to only these pitches. Now I can shape the range. This is essential to what we're going to be doing today. Listen to that. Okay, so I'm keeping the fundamental shape, but I'm just using another stage of shaping. But what am I shaping? I'm not shaping level, I'm shaping the shape of the melody itself, which is fascinating. Okay? And I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of different sort of variation ways to do this. Now underneath this I have my Korg Mini Log XD attached and it's just coming through the output. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play some bass notes in the, in the key of C. Um, as I said, I'm not a modular purist or a generative purist. So I'll use these melodies and I'll just generate some crazy stuff with a sequencer and then I'll start harmonizing and playing you know, either single notes or chords or riffs over, above, around these, these um, melodies being, generative, being generated by the generative processes. Okay? Cool, so I'm just going to play the C note in my bass. little glitches on the system um, but that just happens sometimes if you're recording a lot of stuff um, but I'm sure you guys can hear the harmony that's starting to build okay and how easy was that to just build that initial melody now remember that the range of the melody is controlled here quantizer which is rounding it off to only these notes and now I've got the VCA to control the range of that melody which is <laughs> I can't explain how cool that is it's just one of the coolest things I've ever seen there's a clock at four sort of a, a much more like trance orientated dance -orient okay and I can still go and I can change the initial shape of this melody that, that's our low note now, let's take this down. Okay, let's take this up. Okay, now the range. how much control we have over these positions and the range as well. I'm just going to find something I like quickly. There we go, that's got a nice roof. So, 
isolate it down. Okay, and I just want to show you that's that's sort of a basic process that you can go through. Just using four extremely simple modules, a sequencer, which just does pitch by using these sliders to sort of indicate the pitch, a VCA, which is going to control the range of this melody, a quantizer to bring the sort of values into a musical universe that is related to a certain root key, in this case C, we're using C, um, melodic minor, the one third, fifth, sixth, and seventh notes of the scale. Um, yeah, and then that's that, and just a little bit of reverb, so it's a really, really easy, really, really easy um, way to generate a melody, and you know, you can change this range initially to like 10 octaves, uh, 10 volts, 10 octaves, and you can get these really crazy um, wide-ranging melodies. So let's listen to that. There's the bass note. And again, this VCA controls range, which is lovely. And when you have that 10 octave range, just modulate it a little bit by the VCA. And you can just see I'm playing with the bass harmonics a little bit. Okay, that's quite fast. I didn't want to get to this speed of the clock yet. That's beautiful as well. And if we're going to do the ambient thing, this wetness can come up in the reverb. Okay, let's come back to the range. So already, you know, we're only a few minutes into the generative journey, and you can already see, as I said in the in the intro, why I love this is I don't get bored. I've kind of set up a melody, but I haven't committed to the exact melody. So by just slightly changing the VCA or by just touching one of these sliders, I'm changing the feel of how these melodies move. I'm not going into a piano roll and sort of having to adjust individual notes over time. It's a lot more inspiring. It's a lot less of a conventional linear way to think about pitch and that stops you from getting that fatigue that you get that I think I, I've, I certainly get it when I'm working with MIDI. MIDI fatigues me because I'm making all decisions. I've got to commit to each note at each step along each length of the timeline which is great for certain applications and very sort of boring for other applications. Okay, So um, this is not um, what, what most people would consider to be a typical generative patch, but it is very much generative because we're, we're creating a framework, a set of laws through the quantizer, through the sequencer and the VCA. And we are playing, we're letting the system do some degree of either creating the melody, changing the melody, altering or shaping the melody. Um, and we're sort of doing a dance with it, which is the other part of generative, is that I, as the producer, or you as the composer, you're doing this intricate dance of opening up voltages, opening up ranges of melodies, and then kind of selecting and choosing when to move, when to change, and when to stay. Okay, so that's really important. So this is our first um, generative system, and what's really cool is I'm going to just upload all of these patches. You can see they're very well labeled, and I'm going to upload them all to the Patreon. And I've made you guys literally like a generative playground where I've got all these different stages. This is, um, name of this file, by the way, is generative lesson one. Um, and yeah, I've got one which is disconnected and one which is connected fully and everything is very well labeled and really beautiful. And you can just go and change. You can change the sequencer. You can change the range of the VCA. You can change the scale. Um, either the root key itself or um, the notes of C minor that you want to use if you want to stay in C. And you can just change the clocks and absolutely everything and just get a feel for how these generative systems can help you to shape melodies. Okay? Um, so yeah, enjoy that. And um, as I move on in this lesson, I've got all these patches pre-saved already. So I'm going to keep on adding complexity to these patches. And um, as I move on, um, I'll just keep, I'll just provide all the different staging of the patch all the way up to the final patch, which is like a full track. Okay. Right, so we're adding in this trigger. I'm going to play it without again. Turn the volume up. Now we're going to add that trigger in there. It gets that sort of pulsed 
more punchy feel on the envelope. I'm going to add in a VCA, just a standard um, VCV VCA, and that's going to control. It's going to control. It's going to allow me to control the volume over time of the sound with an ADSR, which is also my next thing I'm going to add. Just a nice simple ADSR. I love this module. I love this thing. MSM modules, by the way, this ADSR. Cool. I'm going to make sure that this ADSR is getting the same clock as everything else. Okay. Or even better. Let's give it the clock. Let's give it a gate from here. Okay, and now you can see it's staging each stage of the envelope. I'm going to take the sound out into the VCA before it hits the reverb. And then I'm going to take the envelope and I'm going to use it to control volume CV. And now you can see I've got an ADSR envelope on the sound and you can actually see that the VCA is showing how the envelope's pumping, which is really cool. So let me just open this up a bit. Let's open up that release and decay. Sounds good. Take all that attack off. And now it just means that if I want to, for example, shorten the decay time, let's open up this. There we go. That's a lot easier to hear because there's some harmonic content. There we go. Now we've got a really short sort of decay time. Very short. I like that. Okay, that's obviously too short. But if you get to these higher clock speeds and you want a really tight envelope, it's really cool. Just to give you an indication of what that sounds like with the bass note, sounds pretty cool. Okay, let's open that up though. And I'm going to leave it at that because that's all I wanted to show you in this patch. I've made you guys a version, let me just turn this down, I've made you guys a version of this patch where um, not only is there an ADSR for amp, but there's another ADSR for, for filter. So I've actually added a filter and then I've also controlled that filter with an ADSR, which just gives you a filter envelope, which is really what you need to make these patches shine in the same way that like a patch from the Prophet or the Moog would, would shine because they've all got quite advanced filter envelopes, those patches. So that was just one thing. I haven't seen that in any generative patches, but when I do this, I add ADSRs for both amp and filter envelopes, and that's really important. Um, but of course, if you're writing ambient stuff or you want a more sort of relaxed, chilled style of music, you don't need such tight ADSRs. But you can just hear it adds a lot of value. Ooh, that is sexy. I won't lie, that's a great sound. And we can really drive these harmonics. All right. All right, so that's ADSR. I've got it. I'm just going to leave it there. And now my mission is to just add one kind of final layer. I don't want to blow your guys' heads off too much today. So I, I, I'll end this patch with just one more final layer, which is where what really is going to sort of make it generative is that we're going to put something in, as I said to you, this the most important part of this patch right now. If we want to add variation, because it's not variating at all, this is just running a fixed sequence. But remember that the range is affected by the VCA. So if we wanted to change, just modulating this range can change this melody enough over time to keep it interesting. And that's probably the, the core focus of what I'd like to do now. All right, now there are a million ways that we can control how this moves over time. We could put an LFO and it could do something really simple like open, close, but it tends to sound quite wily. And in my experience of trying to do this for a couple of days, what I found is I'm almost always 
trying to tweak the control voltage too much. It's just too much. I end up sitting with LFOs and trying to tune them for hours. So I've come up with, um, well I haven't come up with, I've found a really, really cool module that lets me control exactly how I want a parameter to modulate, okay? And what it is, if I just reset these filters, is it is this very sexy little voltage sequencer over here, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a curve. Now this curve is going to represent how I want this value to move. So let's say if I if I just listen to how the kind of movement that I want, I want this. Okay, so it's static values about midway. And then I want it sort of modulating like that. So those those are the kind of values that I'm visualizing. So I'm gonna try and draw that and sort of map it out step by step. Okay, so it's starting midway, and then it's gonna do a little bit of a dirt. And then maybe it'll come up to midway and it's going to do a little bit of a dope. So it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple control curve, but it's very precise. Okay. I'm going to clock this as well. I'm going to clock this. I'm just running that in there. And then I'm going to output the CV into the CV here. And watch. It's moving exactly as my curve moves. Okay, so I can rather just open the potential range like that. So you see how this starts to become now a dance between three components that are making this melody. One, the sequence. Two, the range of that sequence. And three, the control voltage that's controlling how the range of that sequence is modulated. And this is now where we start to get generative. Truly, the patch becomes generative. Okay, and then of course I've just got ADSR because I want more control. So I can just tighten that envelope. Do you see I can control how this melody moves? So let's put a new curve in. See that? Because I've got 10 octaves of range at the initial point of the sequencer, I've got huge ranges that I can go through here. Just doing the curve. Just changing the curve to I've got quite a lot of control. It's a very intuitive way to make a melody move. Again, I'm just going to play some bass harmonics. So we've got a whole bunch of options. It's very wet as well, the sound for if we're starting to get into a more sort of techno -y sound and it's just dry out a little bit. Let's open it up. Okay, and again, I can just redraw this curve. And I can even have, as we get later in and later in the patch, I can even swap this curve for other curves. I can have a lot of control information, different information, affecting the range of this melody do something different. Let's start in the low and just jump up to the highs at the end of the bar. That would be more of a baseline like pedal board technique which is also very cool. Yeah that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh that's so great. That's the baseline. So you see how this is just super cyan mode for melodies, which is why, you know, guys, obviously what you pay me five dollars a month or whatever for is to keep pushing you guys in new directions. And I cannot express to you once you've done this a few times, the concept of writing like in MIDI is just completely archaic. It just does not make sense to me. I feel so much freer, so much more versatile. I can change styles. I can switch between genres. I can change the mood. I can do a whole bunch of stuff that is 
very difficult and there's a lot of resistance when you do it in MIDI like oh I wrote this melody and now I've got to change it or I've got to go back and review or what was that chord was it the two chord drawing your circle again listen circles are great I use circles for for 20 years and they're wonderful and music theory is wonderful but just to direct just to have the process start at like a place with which you're even unfamiliar that's really where the great results are coming um, for me okay so I'm just going to reset this um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we've got, if, if you actually look at what is happening here, we do not have a very complicated patch. It's very simple. We've got a clock. It's generating a signal. It's coming into a sequencer. A whole bunch of pitches, which we set over here. It's coming into a VCA, which controls its range. Sounds simple in the beginning. Oh, cool. We'll just turn that range down. That VCA becomes the most vital tool in the patch for actually controlling and introducing randomization slash unexpected notes into into the melody okay quantizer which is standard fare we're just making sure that anything that comes out this thing no matter where the values are no matter what these pitches are it rounds off to one of these notes okay and i'll show you just just quickly on the quantizer because you can as i said i'll provide these patches for you and you can it's a little generative playground that you can just go generating melodies forever so just check this out quickly i'll just play one more thing um so you'll notice i don't have d is quite a tense note it's the second note in the scale I don't have any D got no D so I'm just gonna put D in there you hear that melody instantly changes quality okay now I'm gonna take the seven out which is a sweet note you see that completely different um, quality of the melody right now let's change the curve let's come in from high It's too cool. Okay, so that's that. So just showing you how, you know, just tweaking a few simple parameters here can produce insanely different results. I mean, we went from really pretty sort of almost trancey, melodic sort of sound. This is really like dark and subversive and it's rolling a lot more around that sort of low note because I can control when this melody goes up, when it goes down. I just don't really know what um, notes it's going to hit. And this brings another whole new concept to mind, which is something I'm going to do in my physical courses, which is just understanding melody as a curve, understanding melody as a shape. Um, I'm going to do a YouTube video on that as well. So I hope you guys will, will watch all the stuff that I'm going to be putting out on YouTube as well because I'm really focused on, on this edgy stuff right now and hoping to really make an impact in the way that electronic producers can actually use these tools to make cool music. Okay, so but but as I was saying, we've got a pretty we've got a pretty simple signal flow. That's before I got lost in resetting the quantizer. We've got a, a clock sequence range of melody into a quantizer and then that's coming into an oscillator it happens to be going through a reverb and if we remove the gate the most complex part of this is that i've got this voltage step sequencer and it's outputting a control voltage and it's affecting the range of the melody which is controlled by this vca which is really cool it's a very unusual way to make melodies and so that's that patch we actually don't even need any of these things that I'll just drag down okay to make a generative patch this is very much a generative patch but if I want to make cool sound design that's when I add the gates add the ADSR and then of course I need a VCA for the ADSR to 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 control so yeah that's kind of where we are guys that's a, a stage two patch okay um, so what I'll do now is I'll just open up where this could go just to show you how this could go um, and then after we do this lesson, you can give me some feedback. And if you enjoyed this, I could show you 10,000 more ways to do generative patches as once you sort of grasp the concept, Omri Cohen and all these other guys are making, you know, there's hundreds of ways to skin a generative cat, so to speak, um, with varying degrees of randomness. So if you like this, if you enjoy this, if you start taking it, I can take you on a deep journey. Um, if you ask me gun to the head, quickest best way to find inspiration for a song tonight i'm opening up vcv it's the first thing i'm doing and that's for the next hundred songs i do so um yeah strongly recommend that you get into it um 
as I said, I haven't added filter envelopes and big delays and automations, so much more. But I just wanted to focus on the aspects that made this generative and sort of show you a different lens to what generative can mean. Okay, cool, fantastic. So what I'm going to do now, I'm still on lesson one. I'm going to open up the next level of this project that I made. Um, and I'm going to show you where this whole thing can go. So give me a second. Right, so we're adding in this trigger. I'm going to play it without again. Turn the volume up. Now we're going to add that trigger in there. It gets that sort of pulsed, more punchy feel on the envelope. I'm going to add in a VCA, just a standard um, VCV VCA. And that's going to control it's going to control it's going to allow me to control the volume over time of the sound with an ADSR which is also my next thing I'm going to add just a nice simple ADSR I love this module love this thing MSM modules by the way this ADSR cool I'm going to make sure that this ADSR is getting the same clock as everything else Okay, or even better, let's give it the clock, let's give it a gate from here. Okay, and now you can see it's staging each stage of the envelope. I'm going to take the sound out into the VCA before it hits the reverb. And then I'm going to take the envelope and I'm going to use it to control volume CV and now you can see I've got an ADSR envelope on the sound and you can actually see that the VCA is showing how the envelopes pumping which is really cool so let's just open this up a bit let's open up that release and decay sounds good take all that attack off and now it just means that if I want to for example shorten the decay time let's open up this there we go that's a lot easier to hear because there's some harmonic content there we go now we've got a really short sort of decay time very short I like that okay that's obviously too short but if you get to these higher clock speeds and you want a really tight envelope it's really cool just to give you an indication of what that sounds like with the bass note sounds pretty cool okay let's open that up though and I'm going to leave it at that because that's all I wanted to show you in this patch. I've made you guys a version. Let me just turn this down. I've made you guys a version of this patch where um, not only is there an ADSR for amp, but there's another ADSR for, for filter. So I've actually added a filter and then I've also controlled that filter with an ADSR, which just gives you a filter envelope, which is really what you need to make these patches shine in the same way that like a patch from the Prophet or the Moog would, would shine because they've all got quite advanced filter envelopes, those patches. So that was just one thing. I haven't seen that in any generative patches, but when I do this, I add ADSRs for both amp and filter envelopes, and that's really important. Um, but of course, if you're writing ambient stuff or you want a more sort of relaxed, chilled style of music, you don't need such tight ADSRs. But you can just hear it adds a lot of value. Ooh, that is sexy. I won't lie, that's a great sound. And we can really drive these harmonics. All right. All right, so that's ADSR. I've got it. I'm just going to leave it there. And now my mission is to just add one kind of final layer. I don't want to blow your guys' heads off too much today. So I, I, I'll end this patch with just one more final layer, which is where what really is going to sort of make it generative is that we're going to put something in, as I said to you, this the most important part of this patch right now 
if we want to add variation, because it's not variating at all, this is just running a fixed sequence. But remember that the range is affected by the VCA. So if we wanted to change, just modulating this range can change this melody enough over time to keep it interesting. And that's probably the, the core focus of what I'd like to do now. All right, now there are a million ways that we can control how this moves over time. We could put an LFO and it could do something really simple like open, close. But it tends to sound quite wily. And in my experience of trying to do this for a couple of days, what I found is I'm almost always trying to tweak the control voltage too much. It's just too much. I end up sitting with LFOs and trying to tune them for hours. So I've come up with, um, well, I haven't come up with, I've found a really, really cool module that lets me control exactly how I want a parameter to modulate, okay? And what it is, if I just reset these filters, is it is this very sexy little voltage sequencer over here, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a curve. Now this curve is going to represent how I want this value to move. So let's say if I if I just listen to how the kind of movement that I want, I want this. Okay, so it's static values about midway. And then I want it sort of modulating like that. So those those are the kind of values that I'm visualizing. So I'm gonna try and draw that and sort of map it out step by step. Okay, so it's starting midway, and then it's gonna do a little bit of a dirt. And then maybe it'll come up to midway and it's going to do a little bit of a dub. So it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple control curve, but it's very precise. Okay. I'm going to clock this as well. I'm going to clock this. I'm just running that in there. And then I'm going to output the CV into the CV here. And watch. It's moving exactly as my curve moves. Okay, so I can rather just open the potential range like that. So you see how there starts to become now a dance between three components that are making this melody. One, the sequence. Two, the range of that sequence. And three, the control voltage that's controlling how the range of that sequence is modulated. And this is now where we start to get generative. Truly, the patch becomes generative. Okay, and then of course I've just got ADSR because I want more control. I can just tighten that envelope. Do you see I can control how this melody moves? So let's put a new curve in. See that? Because I've got 10 octaves of range at the initial point of the sequencer, I've got huge ranges that I can go through here. Just doing the curve. Just changing the curve to I've got quite a lot of control. It's a very intuitive way to make a melody move. Again, I'm just going to play some bass harmonics. Okay, and I can keep changing, for example, the range. I can even take this back down to five octaves if I want to. Just tone that melody in a bit. Back to the envelope. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of options. It's very wet as well, the sound for if we're starting to get into a more sort of techno y sound and it's just dry out a little bit. It up. Okay, and again, I can just redraw this curve. And I can even have, as we get later and later in the patch, I can even swap this curve for other curves. I can have a lot of control information, different information, affecting the range of this melody. Let's do something different. Let's start in the low and just jump up to the highs at the end of the bar. That would be more of a baseline, like pedal board technique, which is also very cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool.
Oh, that's so great. That's the baseline. Okay, so you see how this is just super cyan mode for melodies, which is why, you know, guys, obviously, what you pay me five dollars a month or whatever for is to keep pushing you guys in new directions and i cannot express to you once you've done this a few times the concept of writing like in midi is just completely archaic it just does not make sense to me i feel so much freer so much more versatile i can change styles i can switch between genres i can change the mood i can do a whole bunch of stuff that is very difficult and there's a lot of resistance when you do it in midi like oh i wrote this melody and now i've got to change it or i've got to go back and review or what was that chord was it the two chord drawing your circle again listen circles are great i use circles for for 20 years and they're wonderful and music theory is wonderful but just to direct just to have the process start at like a place with which you're even unfamiliar that's really where the great results are coming um for me okay so i'm just going to reset this um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we've got, if, if you actually look at what is happening here, we do not have a very complicated patch. It's very simple. We've got a clock. It's generating a signal. It's coming into a sequencer, a whole bunch of pitches, which we set over here. It's coming into a VCA, which controls its range. Sounds simple in the beginning. Oh, cool. We'll just tone that range down. That VCA becomes the most vital tool in the patch for actually controlling and introducing randomization slash unexpected notes into into the melody okay quantizer which is standard fare we're just making sure that anything that comes out this thing no matter where the values are no matter what these pitches are it rounds off to one of these notes okay and i'll show you just just quickly on the quantizer because you can as i said i'll provide these patches for you and you can it's a little generative playground that you can just go generating melodies forever so just check this out quickly i'll just play one more thing um so you'll notice i don't have d which is quite a tense note. It's the second note in the scale. I don't have any D. I've got no D. So I'm just going to put D in there. You hear that melody instantly changes quality. Okay. Now I'm going to take the seven out, which is a sweet note. See that completely different um, quality of the melody. Right now, let's change the curve. Let's come in from high. It's too cool. Okay, so that's that. So just showing you how, you know, just tweaking a few simple parameters here can produce insanely different results. I mean, we went from really pretty sort of almost trancey, melodic sort of sound. This is really like dark and subversive and it's rolling a lot more around that sort of low note because I can control when this melody goes up, when it goes down. I just don't really know what um, notes it's going to hit. And this brings another whole new concept to mind, which is something I'm going to do in my physical courses, which is just understanding melody as a curve, understanding melody as a shape. Um, I'm going to do a YouTube video on that as well. So I hope you guys will, will watch all the stuff that I'm going to be putting out on YouTube as well because I'm really focused on, on this edgy stuff right now and hoping to really make an impact in the way that electronic producers can actually use these tools to make cool music. Okay, so but but as I was saying, we've got a pretty we've got a pretty simple signal flow. That's before I got lost in resetting the quantizer. We've got a, a clock sequence range of melody into a quantizer and then that's coming into an oscillator it happens to be going through a reverb and if we remove the gate the most complex part of this is that i've got this voltage step sequencer and it's outputting a control voltage and it's affecting the range of the melody which is controlled by this vca which is really cool it's a very unusual way to make melodies and so that's that patch we actually don't even need any of these things that I'll just drag down, okay, to make a generative patch. This is very much a generative patch. But if I want to make cool sound design, that's when I add the gate, add the ADSR, and then of course I need a VCA for the ADSR to 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 control. So yeah, that's kind of where we are, guys. That's a, a stage two patch. Okay. Um so what I'll do now is I'll just open up where this could go, just to show you how this could go. Um, and then after we do this lesson, you can give me some feedback. And if you enjoyed this, I could show you 
10,000 more ways to do generative patches as once you sort of grasp the concept, Omri Cohen and all these other guys are making, you know, there's hundreds of ways to skin a generative cat, so to speak, um, with varying degrees of randomness. So if you like this, if you enjoy this, if you start taking it, I can take you on a deep journey. Um, if you ask me gun to the head, quickest, best way to find inspiration for a song tonight, I'm opening up VCV. It's the first thing I'm doing. Uh, and that's for the next hundred songs I do. So, um, yeah, strongly recommend that you get into it. Um, as I said, I haven't added filter envelopes and big delays and automations, so much more. But I just wanted to focus on the aspects that made this generative and sort of show you a different lens to what generative can mean. Okay, cool, fantastic. So what I'm going to do now, I'm still on lesson one. I'm going to open up the next level of this project that I made. Um, and I'm going to show you where this whole thing can go. So give me a second. All right, guys. So this is the patch that I've actually saved for you guys. It's super, super cool. Um, it's pretty much what I was working on in the last in the last part of the video. But I've just made some subtle adjustments, and I've I've given this a label, which is CV curve equals the range of the melody. And you can see pretty clearly that I've also tuned this to the exact curve that I want. I put the ranges of everything where I thought it sort of sounded best, and I sped the clock up to 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 um, times four. And this is like something that I would start using in a song straight away. Um, why I like this is it's sort of like, I don't know, Neil's Frummy. It sounds like a really complex piano piece, actually, the way it plays. So yeah, let me just play it for you. Okay, now that's, you know, as you can see, just one curve that's controlling this melody, right? because I really like my curve. Okay, there's no more undies left. That's fine. You can't actually undo this. That's fine. All right. Lovely. Um, so this is, this is what I'm going to say for you. The name of this patch is called Generative Lesson 1, Stage 2. And you can just, um, if you want to, I've left an LFO for the range of the melody. And instead of having this control curve, you can do a comparison of what would happen if you, for example, had the LFO controlling the, the, the range of the VCA instead of such a precise control curve. You may like it more, it just depends how much you like randomization. Because I'm quite specific in the way I compose, I like to have these very precise curves. Um, and that's that. That's sort of like a stage two generative patch. I mean, there's not too much stuff going on here because, again, you don't really need the trigger. It's just when I say you don't need it, it massively enhances it, but it's not essential. And the plateau is just sort of an added benefit. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six modules in addition to the reverb and the and the trigger, which just opens up sort of a whole other layer of processing, as you saw with the ADSRs, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, I must kind of warn you that if if you're new to this, I would stop and I would get my head around generative concepts. Watch this, build this from scratch, play with it, really get the vibe, and then maybe watch some of Omri's stuff on Let's Build Some Basic Generative Stuff, and um, and just check out all the ways that you can let, let the module start working and talking, okay? Um, because when we go to the next level, like you're going to see the patch that I open up now, obviously it sounds a lot better, but it starts to get pretty complex. It starts to get pretty complex with where the gates and triggers are going, and it can get pretty wily pretty quickly. Um, but I'll, I'm going to open up the next patch, which is the patch that also I'm going to give to you guys. It's actually going to be the start of my next single, because I've got a single to do for, for a really cool label. Um, so I'll give it to you guys before I even make the track with it, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let me open that project up. All right, so as you see, immediately, and I'm just going to stop everything, and I'm just going to change my driver so that I can capture it. All right, so as you see, <laughs> I really went to town in this patch, and I've labeled everything as as well as possible. Now, I'm not going to like get into all the technical stuff, but I'll just take you through a broad overview, okay? And there's still one more level actually above this of complexity. So... 
it looks a, a lot scarier than it is. Basically, what's happened is if we run this, and if we take it maybe up to, let's take this up to. Oscillator sound. Yeah, you can see there's a lot more melodic variations, it's a lot more randomized than the initial melody. And there may, may be a good thing or a bad thing, but I'll just run you through the sort of logic in this patch very quickly. Okay, and what's happening is that we've got three control curves that are affecting the VCA. And what's happening is that those control curves, these three control curves, are coming into a sequential switch. And I've lab labeled that switch for curves. You've got curve one, curve two, and curve three. And you can redraw these curves. You can literally just sit and, and make completely new melodies. And you can make three new curves. Okay. Now you don't entirely know, and I'll go into this in the next level of, of patching, when the sequential switch is going to be playing these three curves. Okay. We know it's going to be playing one of the three curves at all times. But we don't exactly know when. Okay, I'm actually just gonna go. There we go. Okay, so this is just alternating now between these three curves. Okay, and we don't quite know when because the sequential switch, which is a really cool piece of gear, it's just kind of randomly outputting one of these curves into manage the control voltage of the VCA. Okay, it's a little bit complicated, but essentially you've just got. A whole bunch of inputs these sequences come in and only one comes out so it just chooses which slot to output the pitch information or the voltage information out to that to that input okay and um, an LFO is actually controlling the rate at which this moves around so if I speed up that LFO you can see it starts to move quicker between slots I can make it just manically jump between slots which is also cool see how fast it's moving between those three curves or I can make it really slow so it's how it kind of stabilizes on each melody for a bit longer so this is generative because we don't really know exactly when it's switching I don't know exactly which notes are playing but I know that they're all in key because they're coming through a quantizer and I like them all so I'm just kind of gonna let this play it it's lovely and I can play some bass underneath it sounds uh, You see how much control I've got. Again, I can have three different curves, three similar curves, inverse curves, whatever I want to do. And remember that these curves are not melodies. These curves are controlling the range of the VCA. Okay, so it all comes, this, all these crazy melodies are coming off one static sequence. And the only thing that's changing is the voltage curves that are affecting the VCA, which affects the range that the sequence has. Okay, you wouldn't think a tiny parameter like range can make a whole symphony. Okay, it's absolutely nuts. -ose. So yeah, this is a slightly more sort of advanced patch. And you know, for my nerds, real nerds that are getting into this, it actually went a little bit deeper because I started making control curves to control, for example, the timbre on plates. So I'll just show you, I've left these values very subtle, but let's Okay, that's controlling timbre. So you, I'm basically just showing you that you can control any voltage in steps. And I want you guys to just go and, like I said, I made you a generative playground. You can just go and have fun. And you can also map these to other values. I've mapped this, controls timbre on plates. You can take it out of timbre and you can put it into morph. Let's try that. Oh, that sounds insane. I love that. I love that CV modulation. Modulating um, morph. Let's have it in timbre as well. Just subtle. Okay, so you can absolutely go insane once you get into this stuff. It's just too dynamic. You would never be able to do this in MIDI. It's just, you'd have 200 automation lanes. It would be a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. Okay, but to get even freakier, just to show you how deep this stuff can go, let me just turn this down and just 
give you a basic explanation to 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 sort of show you how deep this can go not only do i have a sequential switch which is governing which of the three curves control the range of the vca which controls the melody <laughs> not only are we doing that but there's also an alternative melody where this sequencer because you see these sequences can mean many different things this sequencer is actually a melodic sequencer so these are pitches these are volta they're, they're all voltages but this is a voltage that's being converted into pitch the way i'm running it right now is that i've got some variation of these curves coming into a sequential switch and then every once in a while on these slots four and eight i have this alternative melody so you see it's not moving it's static i'm going to take a sine wave in i'm going to make it move now it's playing my random melody let's make it slow There we go. It's let on slot four and it's just playing these random melodies now. Okay, so I can just go and if I start playing bass under this, you could argue that it's actually not as good because it's less structured. It just depends how much you like structure. Okay, so we I mean we can literally go on now. Now this is where You know, I said in this video that I was going to try and lay to rest some misconceptions about modular and about generative. One is that generative makes life like, you know, you don't have to do anything because the computer is doing it all for you, which is not true at all. Okay, because even if I generate the m one voice absolutely perfect and it's, I didn't even do anything, a sequencer just made it for me, I've still got to contextualize what's my chord progression, how does it work, arrangement, tempo, timing. Um, you know, I've got to arrange that phrase, I've got to build it, I've got to do counterpoint, I've got to do harmony. You know, the initial phrase could come from the Lord Jesus Christ himself on a flute down from heaven. I've still got to interpret that in a piece of music. Get the levels right. Record it. Choose the timbres. Choose the sounds. Rhythm, rhythms, polyrhythms, all these things. So, um, yeah, there's nothing wrong. And as you see, this is as much as the quote-unquote machines are assisting or the laws of the system is dictating what comes out. And I'm never quite sure it's also a very intentional process. It's not the way that I'm using it, a very random process. But I'm also showing you quite a structured way to write generative music. We could just set these modules up and have random gates and random times and just let them go forever. Okay? So that's that. So as you see now, I didn't want to freak you out, but I wanted to show you this was a patch that I built purely for my own enjoyment, my own fun and satisfaction. And I just wanted to show you, um, you know, how deep this thing can go. Just in terms of how random do you want stuff? And if we listen to this, it's a bit of a slower clock. Um, it's pretty random. Like if this was an ambient track and there were some soft drums, I wouldn't really be able to know when the note variations were coming, but I'm hearing enough structure to keep me interested. Let's smooth the sound out. Even slower, man. Yeah, that's gorgeous. There we go. You see those those random high notes just sort of slip in and they keep you really focused. You can slow this way down. See, and then these tumble variations might be a bit much. It all just depends on the style. Okay, let's go back to the rave. Beautiful. Okay, if it's too crazy, again, this is where VCAs and range control, for example, we can take any one of the voltages that's driving these melodies, we could take them through a VCA, we could reduce them, or I could go to the source of the voltage itself, and I could make an adjustment. The sequence is playing some pretty crazy stuff. This, um, 
this uh voltage also has like 10 10 range 10 um it has 10 volts of range 10 octaves of range so i'm just going to change that to five octaves and then i'll start getting slightly more palatable notes when i have all these these higher notes okay so that's quite an advanced patch but what's happening there and what makes it crazy is that we've got three control curves affecting the VCA and we're switching them out with sequential switches and then we're still taking the output of that and switching that with an alternate melody just to show you sort of the extremes of the random game okay wonderful the twofold two-part story um, the first part of the story is I want to show you how I've rebuilt voice one okay which is um, I just wanted to, a slightly simpler thing, and this was actually a demo. Someone came to my studio this morning, halfway between recording this lesson, and I thought, yeah, let me just show them the sort of type of patch that I was building for this lesson, and I ended up recreating almost identical but slightly, slightly um, different. And the difference is just a little bit simpler. If you listen to the voicing, we should be hearing that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we listen to that. Um, it's just a C minor triad, only contains C, D sharp, and G. And same story, there's a control curve that's um, modulating the CV of the VCA, and that VCA is controlling the range of the melody. So I, I know I haven't labeled this because I don't have time to do that. Um, but yeah, th there's a rebuild basically of the same concept from the last patch. It's an almost identical sort of thing but the sequence is slightly different and then of course everything else is therefore slightly different we can open up that um, morph control and really add some bright ends a bright top end and also timbre and morphs are modulating if you're wondering what this is this is sending out a control curve which you can see is linked to both timbre not so much modulation and morph which is really quite a lot of modulation Okay, so yeah, it's a very dynamic, cool sound, which um, moves a lot, I really like it. Very dramatic, very tense. Okay, so that's my first voice. Now, um, I'm going to give you this patch as well. I'm feeling very generous with my patches today, but I'm going to hand you this patch as well. And um, you can just play with that again. You know, you can change the notes of the quantizer. Look what happens if you, for example, add that six in there. Straight away the melody changes. Let's add the seventh as well. Let's make it the full scale except for F. Oh, I need the D in there. And let's play some bass. I'm going to give you this patch and you can just mess around with it but the important thing to know is that this isn't what I actually wanted to do in the last part of the lesson um, this is a background voice this is a background voice for a second voice that I have added as you can see there's a second channel coming to the mixer and if we scroll it down I've actually prepared the sort of second half of this patch which is a second voice and it's using an entirely different concept to generate a random melody so, as I said to you, there are hundreds of ways to generate random melodies. Um, I won't give a whole list, but we did one um, above where we have sort of a, a pitch-based sequencer, and then we quantize it, and we refine it, and we get a little bit generative. This is an entirely random melody generator, okay? And it's based off a machine called a Turing machine. Um, sure i don't want to give you a whole history lesson on turing machines but check out alan turing's work really insane um and basically what it is it's a random voltage sequencer so it sets off um a whole bunch of random voltages okay and because i don't want to waste your time and because i'm not actually trying to teach you this i just want to show you that it's possible so i can inspire you to do more vcv um I've chained everything together already and I've labeled it so we don't have to sit like manually connecting everything now. You can just hear what Turing machines do when they are set up and configured properly. Okay, so voice one is muted. Um, and basically, this is a very simple concept. I've got a Turing machine here and you can see how I've labeled random in the middle and locked on the right hand side. Let's just focus on those two right now. 
okay so there's no voltages coming through because it's I, I stopped the gate so i'm just going to open it up and as soon as i cl click this to random what you are going to hear is a whole bunch of random voltages come through oh i've just got to turn this up on the mixer oh there we go okay now you see it's going to keep changing it's going to keep throwing random voltages now don't forget i've done a lot to the sound to make the sound good I've controlled the range with a VCA, so I can introduce some super high notes there if I want. But I've got the range kind of controlled. I've also quantized it to a very specific scale, which is C melodic minor again. I've given it the whole scale in this one. Um, I've put an ADSR on, I've got it filtered. So I'm doing a lot of things to the sound. I'm also filtering, I've got a filter ADSR as well. And it's going through a reverb, okay? But you will notice that it is spitting out an infinite um, amount of melodic changes just keeps on changing okay and it's absolutely amazing now if I hear something I really like so let's look this random melody I'm just gonna wait for it to generate something I like anything we need to consider this voice in the context of at least one other voice aside from the bass voice that I'm playing by the way this bass that keeps on coming in is coming from the Korg Mini Log XD which is just patched straight into my audio interface so um, don't get confused and think that that's being generated by one of these modules it's not and that is also a great way to use VCV it's just plugged in as one instrument in a rack of instruments in a rack of keyboards hardware synthesizers software VSTs you can bring them all together um, eventually in a door anyway so yeah all right now let's hear this in the context of this first voice okay it's quite crazy because we've got way too many notes in that first sequence now just gonna simplify that take away the d See, we're going to squeeze them until it works. Okay, that's good enough. Right, now I want to come up with a new melody on the touring.
like it. I like it, but just to show you how we could keep going. And by the way, I have the range of the Turing machine. guys it gets quite chaotic there's a lot of shaping that you can do but as you can see I'm you know I made this in about five minutes and I'm sort of really deep into the composition process now I'm like considering the exact melody that I want for a, for a song if I was gonna release it and it's it's been really quick to set all of this up so you know it takes a couple couple days or weeks or maybe months of practice until you really start getting these concepts um, and man, I really struggled with this routing in the beginning. But as the process has gone on, I've started to firstly really understand it and secondly, really, really enjoy it. I look forward to being in here, connecting modules and just having a good time. And the results always surprise me. But that being said, I'm starting to be able to control them a lot more and actually be able to conceptualize putting this into, into tracks, as I'm sure you guys can hear. So yeah, that, that is it. I wanted to show you, you know, just the basics of what a Turing machine is. I won't go through the technical setup of how to set it up. There are some online tutorials. If you'd like to see that, by the way, if you guys want to see anything custom, guys, you can just ask me for it on Patreon, you know? Like, I don't know, make a $1 donation. I'll make you a two-minute video on how to do anything. I want to just get the, the flow of questions and answers and stuff going. And maybe we can do like, I'll pick a charity and you guys can say, oh, I'd, I'd like to know exactly this thing about the touring or how do I do this? And I'll send you a, a private video if you want. Um, and you can just donate to a charity or my Patreon, actually. I wouldn't mind the money. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. And, yeah, as you can see, we could go on forever. But I don't want to go on forever because I don't want to scare you and intimidate you or put you off. All of these patches, every single one I've used today, is going to be up on the Patreon when this lesson is uploaded. Um, and so our uh, basic notes um, that I put on the screen today, those will be uploaded as well. Um, and yeah, feel free to modify these patches, change them, improve them, mess them up, do whatever you want to do. Um, please do not make and release songs from these patches that sound completely like these patches, because I'm planning to do that. But rather just take the workflow and then from then on, you know, go and change some things out, some components. And then by all means, you're welcome to to make music with this go ahead um all right enjoy have a lovely week and hit me up and let me know what you guys would like to do for the next patreon lesson also by the way guys um i'm hiring at the moment i would like to hire someone to come in and help me with the youtube channel um you know i'm doing cool videos for patreon but to do these videos for youtube obviously they're going to be a lot shorter and they're going to be a lot more conceptual and they, they need to have like multiple camera angles and the studio looking great and have me in them and animations and a whole bunch of stuff now i know nothing about that world and so i'm looking for someone to yeah come in and help me um yeah animate and do after effects and do all those kind of things so if any of my patrons have that kind of skill set please hit me up ryan at swoonagency.com or ryan at soulcandy.co.za um awesome and if you guys aren't getting replies on the patreon messenger because it's a bit of a stupid messaging system please feel free to email me on one of those addresses have a lovely week get creative let me know what you think of modular and yeah jobless